You are now tuned in to The Money Zone with your host, Falasha Day, the accountant for entrepreneurs. The time is now, your future waits, your money matters, make no mistake, it's not too late to dominate, so don't delay, get your money straight. The money, money, the money zone, together we'll achieve your goals, we're building wealth, you're not alone, so don't delay, get your money straight. Hey guys, hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of The Money Zone. I'm your host, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I'm excited to be back on RIP Radio Network again, another Tuesday. I think I missed you guys last year. I missed you. That's why I can't even remember. I missed you guys last week. What happened? I don't even remember what happened. Oh, the snow. Okay, yeah. Look, you could tell. I'm like in tax zone right now, but I'm in the money zone. Look, guys, we have like an action pack night for you guys tonight. Like I said, last week, due to the snow, I wasn't able to be here. Um, but today, look, we're talking about tax scammers. We're talking about are you a scammer? We're talking about claiming people's children. We're talking about it all so i'm excited to be coming here don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list at bit.ly forward slash philosophy tv don't for forget to uh follow me on all things social media philosophy the accountant as well and look come on now i love to hear your voice tonight 301-232-5700 give me a call rip radio network guys look okay so look, y'all, y'all kind of excited. You can file those taxes, right? I know, cause I'm getting the pressure myself. Look, I, I know, I know you kind of excited, because I'm, I'm feeling the pressure. I'm getting the calls, and you know now we could do the advances and all of that stuff in my office, which I never really wanted to do it, but we can do the advances. So I know you guys are like excited and fired up. So look, let me take a quick little break and then we're about to go right into it and I'm about to go what? Get ripped on Rip Radio.
Okay. So don't forget, if you are a small business owner, we'll definitely do. A, uh, we'll love to have you doing our business spotlight, so you can get, you know, your business name out there. So if you are a small business owner, look, don't forget to try to get on the money zone, so you can have your business spotlighted. So look, are you the tax scammer? Like straight up, guys, are you the tax scammer? So okay, so first things first. If you did not provide 50% or more of your nephew's living expenses and your nephew did not live with you for six months or more, then guess what? You should not be claiming your nephew on your tax return. You definitely should not be claiming your nephew um, on your tax return. But to be honest with you, this is really, really common. So right around this time, People that have multiples, right, multiples, three, four, five children right now, they're looking for people to, you know, claim their children so they can get like $1,000 or like $1,500, you know, to put in their pocket. And, you know, I understand the cost, right, guys? I understand the cost. And you understand the cost too, right? It's a good cost. Everybody need money, right? But we have to put things in perspective. There is this thing called the Internal Revenue Code that gives you specific instructions as to who you can claim, how you can claim them, and why um, you're able to claim them. But many people are not following the rules. And if you are that person that right now you know you did not provide 50% or more, of that child that you're claiming on your tax return right now, you might be sitting right in front of TurboTax watching the money zone, right? You might be right in front of TurboTax about to file your tax return and then ask yourself, did you provide 50% or more of that child's living expenses? And better yet, did that child live with you for six months or more in 2018? If that child did not live with you and you did not provide more than 50% of their living expenses, then guess what, Roger? You are the tax scammer. Like literally, you are the tax scammer. You are scamming because you really legitimately aren't supposed to be claiming your nephew you your niece and the reason why it's a scam is because you actually getting more money back on your refund than what you are supposed to do so boom that's the problem and so it's really common for um you know how would i say this um low income ethnicities or communities or groups or whatever um, it's not just African Americans, it's the Spanish community. It's really just basically the bottom of the pool of each race. The bottom of the pool of each race do some stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. But the reason why I want to bring this here up on the money zone is that the fact that the problem is many of you don't even know that it's not legit. Many people don't even know. Actually, 85% of the people that claim somebody else's children legitimately do not know because of their lack of knowledge or exposure to taxes and you know so forth and so forth educational background whatever the situation may be they really don't know that claiming their nephew or claiming their niece is illegal considered tax fraud so right now, if you're watching The Money Zone and you claim your niece for your nephew and you thought it was okay, give me a call, 301-232-5700, so we can have a discussion because it's not okay. Like, to be honest with you, a lot of moms are pressuring their family right now to have multiples to claim their children. So it may not just be you, you know what I mean? Like, it may not be you that's coming up with the bright idea to claim, my, to claim your niece or nephew. It might be your sister or your cousin or that distant family member that be like, hey, you know, um, you claiming Joe today? You know, you claiming him this year? You know, such and such asked me. I just want to make sure you doing it. Look, don't fall for the bait this year. Remember I told you guys, see, all the money's always to y'all new to me. If you've been watching me on live streaming for a few years, you know that this is not right. You've heard me say this years after year after year, but I want you guys to know, to be honest with you on the RIP radio, on the money zone, that it's not good for you guys to be claiming 
children that you did not provide 50% or more, they live in expenses, and they did not live with you for six months or more. So the problem is, guys, is this. That's considered tax fraud because you blatantly knew you weren't providing those expenses. So what happens is you're opening up your door for uh, uh, years and years of being audited, but then also exposing yourself to have your return looked at for several years to come. So the problem that we're facing right now is it's just not you claiming the child that's the problem. It's also the credits that you, are, that you get from claiming that child. So you might qualify for earned income tax credit um, because of your income. And what happens is because you didn't claim that child, it puts you in a whole nother situation. So you get more money back. You know, everything. You're able to probably claim head of household, so we, you breaking the laws there. You didn't claim the child. Look, guys, it's just a gamut. Look, that just sounds like a lot. It's a gamut of different arenas. So to be honest with you, let this year be like your last year. If you're doing it right now, like, let this be your last year because every good thing do come to an end. And what I don't want is you end up getting a tax bill you cannot hand. Like, you know, sometimes they say, like I was watching, um, what is it? What is the name of that movie? Oh, oh, the American, is it American Dream? Something with Denzel Washington. I can't even think of the day going name of the movie. And he had the opportunity to actually walk away. The guy in Japan said, you know, it's always good to lead a business on top than a leader business in the bottom. And so for all of you that know that you've been filing your taxes illegitimately for all of these years, it's good that you walk away now before you get caught up and it just adds on to more and more and more pressure and adds up to that tax bill. And look, you on top now because you didn't got the money for years and years to come. Don't decide to walk away after you get the audit notice. Don't decide to stop claiming the child after IRS knock on your door. Decide that this year is going to be the year that you don't claim nobody else's child so you won't end up left with the bag. So, look, you could say, oh, Felicia Day, you know, I'm getting the extra money and, you know, I need it for my family and I understand all of that. But guess what? You're going to end up having to pay that money back anyway so if you get caught up it's better that the amount is lower to keep you out of criminal charges range than if the amount gradually keep going up because you're claiming that child illegally for years and years and years with no proof in the pudding and guess what they throw the book at you and the book is criminal charges so guys we about to take a quick little break on the money zone i'm your host felicia day don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list bit.ly forward slash felicia day tv give me a call 301-232-5700 if you know you've been claiming your niece or nephew illegitimately
Hey guys, look, we had to take a quick little break, but we're back. Look, if you're just coming in to segment two, segment one, we talked about claiming children that do not belong to you. And basically, the slight ramifications. I didn't give you guys all the penalties, but when you hear those dollar amounts that they can just throw at you, you might think twice. Um, about claiming somebody's child that's not yours, okay? So don't forget, I can help you file your taxes if you are looking for a tax repair or a tax accountant to better assist you with all your needs. Um, definitely get on get on my calendar. Go to bit.ly forward slash Velocity Taxes. Get on my calendar. Um, I'll be glad to assist you this upcoming tax year. Because, look, I really, truly do not want you guys to get scammed, okay? So, look, that's what we're talking about. Are you guys getting scammed or are you scamming to increase your refund? So, like, first off, what is a scam? Something is like, you know, let's, let's see what um, Wikipedia say what a scam is really quick. Let, let me see what they say a scam is really quick. Just so we can see if you're a scam. So a scam is a dishonest scheme, a.k.a. a fraud, right? So now my question to you is, are you being scammed to increase your refund or are you scamming? So let's be honest. A lot of you are being scammed, and you're being scammed by people you think or thought actually cared about you. You're actually being scammed by that tax professional that you've possibly been going to for four and five years. And you're actually being scammed by the person that, uh, look, I, I'm not even really good at keeping things. Yes, uh, by the person that files almost everybody you know tax return. It's really common. Like, let's think about it. Most people don't go to a new tax person unless they will refer to them. Like, that's how I've gotten my biggest, most of my, majority of my clients, to be honest with you, by referral. You know, some of them still find me on Google, and a lot of you find me on Facebook and live streaming and stuff like that. But my core book of business is through referrals. So let's be honest. If you are being scammed by a tax professional that is so-called doing you a favor and getting you a higher refund, you're also putting everybody that you know of in that same shady, fraudulent situation. So what does that look like? Okay. So you refer a person, you refer your family member to a tax professional that you've been going to, and such and such refer you to that person. And you ended up getting a higher refund than what you normally would have gotten from the old person that you've been going to for years, right? And so you all excited and pumped up, right? And then you call your best friend and you be like, hey, boo, oh, my gosh, you need to come and see X, Y, Z, man. He or she is a beast, man. I got, like, five or six grand in my tax return, and I'm normally owing, like, for real. Like, you excited, right? Then that person go get their taxes, same thing, pumped up. Then they refer another person. Okay. But guess what? That tax professional, guys, did not do anything special. That tax professional did not do anything but give you a high-yield entrance loan that can actually end up sending you to jail depending on the complexities behind it all. That person that you think or consider doing you a favor because you're getting a higher refund than if you would have done it yourself or if you would have come and had me done your taxes or went to another professional and they did it the way it's supposed to be done, right? You are ending up putting yourself in a deeper situation because you did not know that this person that you trusted and this person that you sent all of your family to is doing shady stuff. So let me tell you guys about a story that happened to me last week. So you guys know I'm on different multiple platforms to, um, you know, get more business and to get referral business. So I'm on the site and a customer contacted me and so he went through my process and if you guys work with me, you know my process is sign your engagement letter, make your payment, all of that stuff. So he went through my whole process, guys. 
And I'm thinking, okay, no questions asked, no nothing. He might be a straight shooter. I'm excited. Like, okay, yes, this is my type of client. Look, y'all, I'm pumped up. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we go. I go ahead on and do the taxes or whatever. And then I contact the person. It's like, okay, I'm done. You know, I reviewed your prior year return. We need to hop on a call so we can finalize this year and I can give you the juice about your taxes. So long story short, y'all, we get on a call, right? We get on a call and I explained to him that the person that did your taxes overstated your itemized deductions by $42,000. And if you guys don't know what your itemized deductions are, those are the deductions that you're able to take if you don't take the standard deduction. And see, this is another reason why I don't like to say all that because it starts to sound like rambling. It's, I really don't want that, Trump, to be honest with you. Got, got it, got it, got uh, Okay. So, yeah. So it's the credit that you, the deduction that you can take instead of taking your standard deduction if you own a home, you pay property taxes, you got medical expenses and so forth and so forth. So if your your if your itemized deductions are higher than your standard deductions, then your refund will be more and your taxes will be lower. So these shady professionals, what they're doing is they're increasing you guys' itemized deductions, right? Beyond what your income level can actually afford. See, this is how you could tell they're not really legit accountants for real because the numbers don't even make sense. So you telling me Joe make fifty grand and then Joe spend forty grand to maintain his house though, and to make his fifty grand, he spent thirty thousand. Like that doesn't make sense. So you could tell they're not really legitimate accountants because the numbers don't even add up. But the problem is, you thought that they were doing something for you. You thought that they knew something more than me or more than the next tax professional because you've always gotten a higher refund. And as you're watching The Money Zone on RIP Radio Network, you're learning today that that person didn't do you a favor. They actually put you in harm's way. They put you guys in harm's way simply because you didn't know that they were going through um, illegal steps and taking fraudulent credits and deductions that you weren't allowed to take to get you that money that you have in your pocket right now or the money that you're anticipating having in the next two months or the money that you're sitting there like, where's my W-2, where's my information so I can go get that money. So if you haven't filed your taxes this year and you've always felt a little suspect, you know, because guys, let me tell you something. I got two missions for taxes. My mission number one is to save you as much money as I legally can possibly do. And two, prevent you guys from dealing with these bad black market tax professionals because it's hurting urban communities. Okay, and if you guys don't understand the impact that it's hurting, just ask the nephew and the cousin that haven't filed their taxes in five years what happened. That's what happened. They had the shady tax professional. But guys, I tell you guys all of this tonight, specifically so you can ask yourself, is it really the right thing? Is that person doing what's right to get you that refund. And I guarantee you, eight out of 10 times, because you got some good preparers out here, you know, so eight out of 10 times in the urban community, if you don't go to somebody fully legit that's open year round, eight out of 10 times, your tax return was probably overstated and you didn't even know. And what saddens me is, in three years, if you get a $15,000 tax bill from IRS, you're not going to be able to afford to pay it. If you get that $15,000 tax bill, and see, this is the problem, guys. It's not just the federal that you defraud, and it's also your state. So they're overstating your federal, and they're overstating your state. So you're going to owe money from both arenas. And if you're over here in Maryland, <laughs> the Maryland comptroller don't play. Look, I think I filed my taxes last year. Five days, I got a notice like, hey, if you don't pay what you owe, you going, I'm sending certified mail. They don't play. Merlin don't play. So, guys, like, let's really be honest this year. 
because you may be the one that's trying to scam and don't really know that it's a scam. And I'm telling you today on Radio Network, on the Money Zone, guys, that you're scamming. But from today forward, you're going to question whether or not that professional did something extra. Or did he or she really know their stuff? Or did they just fraud you and put you in harm's way? So, guys, let me take a quick little break, and we'll be right back on the Money Zone, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the Money Zone. Hopefully that break didn't catch you. Look, it almost caught me. But look, I'm excited because we're about to go right into um, our last and final segment. Because look, like last week I wasn't here due to the snow. So we have, like I told you, an action pack. Well, action pack money accounting type of day, right? So we're going to talk about three reasons why, you know, you guys shouldn't have rushed to file your taxes or you shouldn't be rushing right now to file your taxes. So reason number one, there are just an enormous amount of changes right now that's happening with the tax code and tax laws. And to be honest with you, as a payroll professional, as an accountant myself, and knowing what um, your bank and your merchant and your credit card company and everything has to go through to be able to produce your end of the year statements, to be honest with you, a lot of you have probably an error or mistake on your W-2 right now. 
So, for example, I actually need to call, like, two clients. Um, yeah, try to do their taxes, and um, their numbers are not adding up right. The, the payroll company made mistakes. And so, if like I said, if the numbers aren't right, like, it's noticeable, it looks fraudulent, it just doesn't look right. So now I have to tell this client, hey, guess what? I'm not going to be able to file your taxes until you get a corrected W-2. And a lot of you are going to be in that same situation. But you probably already filed your taxes. So the number one reason why you guys should wait to file your taxes is simply the fact that there may be errors on your documents that needs to be corrected before you file your taxes. And if you've already filed your taxes, right, then you're going to be paying double the bucks, okay? And I'm sorry if you're doing your taxes via TurboTax, um, an amended return is challenging. And if you're working with a black market professional, they may not know how to do an amended return. So you're going to end up spending more money just to have your taxes filed this year simply because you decided to rush. So rushing to file your taxes is not always a good thing. Now, if you've been, you know, hit with identity theft or something like that, then filing your taxes early is my best recommendation for you. But if you haven't been hit with identity theft and you know mm, something don't look right on your paperwork or you haven't received everything yet, you want to wait to file your taxes, okay? Another reason why you want to wait to file your taxes, because a lot of these softwares that us professionals use, like let me be honest, right, are going through some major updates. <laughs> and if there's an error in one of their changes and you've already filed your taxes early and they didn't catch the error until after your taxes was filed, then once again, a blooper has occurred and you're going to have to amend your return and so forth and so forth. So rushing guys to file your taxes, yes, you want the money. I understand that. You want the money. I get it. I understand. I'm with you. I'm with you. I know you want the money. But just wait about a couple of weeks and make sure your paperwork is accurate. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the people that just got a W-2 because the client that I'm talking about, she don't have a house or none of that. She has a regular W-2. And now she cannot file her taxes because they made a mistake on her W-2. And guess what? That is common. But if you've waited to file your taxes, the company probably would have caught their error. The company probably would have received a rejection notice from when they submitted the documents because the numbers didn't add up. They would have probably assisted you with the problem but because you filed your taxes it's now become double problems your tax return is wrong and your paperwork was wrong but if you would have waited you would have got correct the paperwork and your w and your um taxes wouldn't have been um incorrect okay so wait 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 especially when you're getting a lot of different paperwork okay so the number two was the softwares like TurboTax, the software i use the software a lot of professionals use are still going through updates. So there's a fair chance, not saying that everybody's taxes are wrong, I'm not saying that, but there's a fair chance there may be an error in some form or in some calculations. And if it's submitted to the IRS, then a the return may not be correct, okay? And then last but not least, guys, wait to file your taxes so you can hold on to your money a little longer. The quicker you get your money in your hand, the quicker it's going to be out of your hands. And see, right now, everything in terms of what they realize people buy during this time is at a surplus. So meaning they're charging you more for what you would normally purchase, you know, than what you would normally pay for something if you will wait to buy it in three or four months. So, for example, that car, for example, some clothes, some de new designers, all of that stuff is going to be priced a little bit high right now because people have more money, they know the demand is in, and you, you have access to it. So just wait. Like, I'm going to just say shout out to my cousin. She always be holding on to her refunds for like a year or two, and I don't even know how she do it, but she always do it. 
and she filed her taxes probably around like end of February and she hold on to her stuff. She plan her money out. Like let's be responsible this year. So that's the third reason why you guys want to wait to file your taxes is simply because you'll hold on to your money a lot longer. And then you won't be paying higher prices for stuff that is much more cheaper after tax season because like I said, it's a bait and switch. It's all marketing, baby, and it's all business. It's not personal. So anytime you buy anything during tax season, if you don't know, do comparisons. It's a bit, a, a bit higher, okay? So, guys, I'm excited to be back on RIP Radio Network. The Money Zone is excited to be back, guys. Um, look, too many snow days that mess up my routine and my structure and stuff, and I really hate that. But, guys, we talked about a lot. We talked about the fact that you're not supposed to be claiming somebody else's child. Like, let's stop that. Like, that's one of the adherence to our wealth. Like, come on now. Like, let's get, if you want to claim somebody else's child, be respectable, marry somebody, and have a child. Or get pregnant, have your own child. Go be get a better relationship with your baby mother so you can claim your own child. Or get your kids from your grandmother so you can, like, let's really be honest. Like, come on now. Let's stop this stuff. And then also what I want you to do is be aware of what people are putting on your tax return. You are primarily responsible for everything that happens. So even if you run to the IRS and say, that person is shady, that person did this, that person did that, the IRS is going to say, hey, Joe, but you're responsible for everything. And then you're going to say, well, I don't know taxes. That's why I hired that person. I don't know this. Do you know I don't know is not an excuse and will not alleviate you of any problems with your taxes. So, guys, you are responsible for your actions. You are responsible for your taxes, okay? Then the last segment, guys, we talked about three reasons why you want to wait to file your return, file your taxes, okay, your tax returns. And so we talked about the mere fact that guess what? Huh. Your paperwork might not be right. Your W-2, your mortgage entrance statement, your property tax form, something may not be right. Remember, you're talking about humans and computers, and it's still a, a lag between both. The computers don't know every day going thing, and the person that's operating the computer don't know everything, okay? The second thing you want to do is realize that the tax softwares are going through drastic changes right now. So there can be many glitches. I got my software have already gotten three updates so far, three updates, okay? Now, I don't know what all of the updates. They just tell you, you know, a federal 1040 update and this update, but they don't tell us what it was now. So we don't know if it's a glitch. But my software have went through um, three updates so far. So just be patient. And then last but not least, you want to hold on to your money. Like, guys, like I used my tax refund when I was getting refunds before the baby. Well, no, even when I had brand, like the first two years of having brand and before the baby, I used that money to reinvest into my business. I didn't use that. I didn't. Wow. I didn't really. I didn't use that money to party and to buy new clothes and and shoes and to buy go to the bar and party up. I used that money to reinvest into my business. I used that money to pay bills so I can now focus and build my business. Like this is the time where you want to use your tax refunds, guys, to uplift you and to get you to the next point. And to reinvest into yourself so you can make more money. That mean may go. That mean hire your coach. That mean go to school. That means start that business. Invest in your little website. Invest in your you know whatever you want to do. You know invest in that. Don't invest into material things. Like guys, like let me be honest. I, I used to be a material material whore, and it's okay now. You know because I grew out of it. But when I look at the amount of clothes I have for my daughter. And because they wasn't just no cheap, raggedy clothes, Bryn can't even fit that stuff, guys. So I'm sitting in my house with like twenty, thirty thousand 30000 worth of clothes. And that was a stupid mistake. Now, every time I look at that, I'm like, man, do you know what I could have done with that money? Do you know what I could have invested into my business with that money? Do you know the impact that I could have made in my community with that money? I could have bought somebody else 
clothes and shoes with that money. You know what I mean? Guys, so it, like, let's be more responsible. This 2019, like 2020 is almost here. That's that year where you have to look back and say, what the hell did I do in the 90s? In the 19s. 19s, yeah. 2019. 19s. What did I do? Did I set the record straight? Did I get my finances in order? Did I stop scamming IRS? Did I stop trying to claim somebody's child so I could travel and do extra stuff? Like, come on now. Like, this is it, guys. No more shady stuff. No more shady tax professionals. This is it, guys. So I'm hoping that, you know, what we talked about today don't scare you too much, guys. I didn't get throw y'all the numbers, but I'm going to let you guys know y'all can get penalized up to like $100,000. Like, like the, the penalties are there. It's not just what you got back. So, look, guys, you heard it first. The Money Zone on RIP Radio Network. I'm excited to be back. See you guys next week, Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list, bit.ly forward slash Philosophy TV. Don't forget to try to hire me to be your accountant this year and file your taxes. Because remember I told you, I don't want you guys to get scammed. And the reason why you're being scammed is because you don't know what's going on with your taxes. So work with me. Learn about your taxes so you can never be scammed again, guys. Because guess what? We doing better this year. So have a good night, guys. Peace out.